Hi everybody, I'm Leandra from Paper Artsy and this video is an introduction to fresco paints. It's going to tell you everything you need to know about fresco paints and the features of them and we're going to show you later on in the video some of our new 20 or all of our new 2015 colours. We've got quite a few to show you. First of all I just want to remind you um, of the features of Fresco Chalk Acrylic Paints. We are moving into our fifth year with this product and it's been such a successful paint for the crafting community. It's a, a multi-surface, it goes on any sort of surfaces whatsoever and this example made by Lynn Brown is a really good um, example to show you the sorts of different surfaces. She's used it on some Prima wood, we've got it on little acrylic buttons here, uh, she's got it on metal these are metal charms and she's even um, got a little charm here stuck on top of a wooden thing and this is just some grey board and she's got it onto our waxed craft paper this is fantastic that you can apply the paint onto a waxed surface no problem whatsoever and she's used it with grunge paste you can tint it with uh, tint the grunge paste with the fresco chalk acrylic as well so it shows you just some of the things that you can use the paint on. Also it's great on fabric, it's really good onto glass, plastic, all kinds of different um, surfaces, paper surfaces like tissue, uh, your regular card and, and paper and so forth. So basically I don't think we've found anything you can't use it on. It is a water base so clean up is really easy and that also means that you can dilute it with water so if you want to turn it into a spray then you can mix the paint in a little bottle, shake it up and spray it so you can use it to spray through stencils. Um, the tip for that is actually put the water in your bottle first and then add some paint until you get the depth that you want and of course you can make opaque, opaque paint sprays using that very same technique which is a great thing. Um, you don't need any undercoat with these fresco paints because they're a chalk paint and they're highly matte. You do not need to use gesso at all. So that's a nice little saving uh, time saver. You don't need to base coat anything. We are totally 100% focused on using trendy fashion colours. That is exactly how we wanted to bring a paint to the market. We didn't want to do um, fine art paints, that's not what we're about. We're doing a craft paint which is useful for crafters and we don't want you to be precious about how you use them. So our focus is that we want to make the colours we like using and this is great. We can make high fashion colours, we can reflect colour trends that are going on in the marketplace at the moment and so that's what what our paints are all about. Um, what else can I tell you about them? Well, they're suitable for all sorts of crafting um, projects. You can use them for your journaling, mixed media. You can use them for altered art, uh, textile projects. If you want to mix a textile medium into the paint onto fabric, then it becomes washable. Um, and of course, the very matte finish means that you can write over the top of the paint with any pen that you have. It doesn't need to be a special journaling pen because the surface is really, really matte. Any kind of regular ballpoint pen will work right through to your, you know, ex um, perhaps something like your watercolour pens. Like there's a lot of different watercolour pens on the market now. Those are ideal to use on top of the paint as well. You can also use pencils crayons, virtually any other colouring products that you have you can use on top of the paint, inks, everything. Once it's dry, just like any acrylic paint, it's permanent. That's the nature of acrylic paint, but of course you can keep adding layers with these paints because most of them are quite opaque, so you can keep tweaking it, which is one of the really great features that I love about it. And they're very, very fast drying. So no matter what surface you're working on, they dry incredibly quickly, which often I don't even need to use a heat gun to dry them, which is fantastic. I'm just going to show you a couple of the things that make these paints unique. So um, obviously they're opaque. A lot of them are opaque. So that means that you can use them directly to obliterate the layers below. So you've probably already seen my braid background videos where you build up the layers using the opacity of the paints. That is a great feature of them. This sample here by Joe is also um, a really good example of using the opacity of the paint. Um, for example here she actually made a beautiful blue and green background and then she stamped a few image on, images on there and then she 
blocked out areas using her chalk paint, chalk coloured paint. We do have a paint called chalk. The name of the paint is chalk. I know, complicated. And um, she's used it through a stencil and then stamped over the top. She's also used translucence on top to colour in and add a little pop of colour. And this is another example here of using the translucence to build lots of depth, lots of different shading and depth of colour, whereas the background area is all done with opaques. So the, um, the translucents tend to be a lot brighter and that is something that was quite great that we bring to the market here is the fact that you've got these translucents and opaques which just opens up all kinds of different opportunities. The translucents are going to give you really bright colours and that's fantastic. On top of here I've still got the opaque white and some blue but there's nobody who works the brights better than Alan Vargo. And here she's created amazing backgrounds using orange and red colour combinations and contrasting it with some of our bright blues on top. Here's a little flippity book. All kinds of great colour popping on there. She also uses inks quite, um, they're very compatible on top. Obviously archival ink is an ideal ink that you should use on top of paint. And she uses that quite frequently to add detail with stamped images and I think this has to be one of my favorite pieces that Ellen's done for us it's just gorgeous really beautiful colors stunning way she's used the petals to create flowers in different arrangements but the just the vividness of it is by using the yellows and the orange and the red color palette Okay, so that's enough about the features of our paint. Basically, it goes onto any surface and it's really fast drying. And um, it, you get a nice quantity in a bottle, 50 mils. And um, the price point is really good on it. So let's show you the actual colours that we've got for 2015. This is what the basic 72 fresco chalk paints look like. We have slightly amended them from previous years. Every year at the start of the year we do a little bit of a tweak and start to muck about with some of the colours and the colour families. So this is how our 72 looks now. We've actually got a new paint chart which we've done and on here it's a fantastic tick list for people. So you can see all the colours, there's a little number next to each colour, one, two or three to denote whether it's an opaque, a semi-opaque or a translucent and all of the colours are pictured there. Um, due to print quality it's not a fantastic representation of the colour but it's pretty good and it's a lot better than last year's version so we're really pleased with this one this year. So I'm just going to run through the colour families and how they work and what's new about them. This is obviously a tray that I managed to find that keeps everything in perfectly. And the, you can see quite clearly that I have coloured the tops of each of the paint bottles. The way I do that is I just um, get the paint, I lightly sand the surface of the lid and then I just squeeze the tiniest amount of paint onto my finger and rub it on there and that's it. Job done. So I've done them all nice and pretty for 2015 and for my demos. They won't stay this way for very long. But it's a really great way to see your colours. Now if you're familiar with frescoes you will know that we actually put the colour on a colour swatch on the front of the bottle so that you can see it and you can tell whether they're opaque or translucent depending on how easy it is to see through the chevrons on the front. So if it's a translucent paint you will still be able to see the chevrons and if it's an opaque less so and a semi-opaque will be somewhere in the middle. The paint does dry quite differently in some cases to how it looks wet. So choosing colours by looking through the bottom of the paint bottle isn't a great idea. If you're trying to choose colours in a shop, in one of our retailers, in one of our stockist shops, then you really do need to look at the paint swatches on the front and that will help you choose colours that work nicely together. Um, <clears throat> so let's show you some of our new colour families, shall we? So, as you can see, I've got them all arranged, light through to dark, and um, we've got three sets of greens at the back here now. So, um, the greens, there's sort of a grey green set of paints, which is Honeydew, which is the lightest, and then the next one is Sage, and then the one after that is Toad Hall, and the very dark one is Holly. So those are what I kind of call the grey greens. 
into the more mid-tone greens we've got cheesecake, guacamole, and then the third one there is tinned peas, and the last one is Hyde Park, that's the darkest one. And then this is the sort of more yellow green tones. Uh, and so we've stuck Zesty Zing on the top there. The next color is Limelight. Then we've got Hay Pesto. And at the very back, we've got the green olives, which is a real sort of yellowy green. So that's the three greens. Over onto this side, let's look at the three blues. And here's the little flowers that go with those. So again, you can see we've got a sort of a greyish blue set of blues, and these are ones we brought out last year. So you've got Antarctic, Lake Wanaka, um, Space Cadet is that lovely darker blue, and the very darkest blue is Inky Pool. Inky Pool is actually quite a translucent colour. Then into a brand new set of blues, this four has replaced... Um, the ones that were our more, I used to call them our boring blues, um, sky, ice blue, uh, Baltic blue and peacoat. These four really bright blues are what we're replacing those with and they're just gorgeous. So we've got oyster blue, our nice lightest one. Then we've got smurf, china, matches my nail polish. And the very last one is glass blue, and this one's a translucent, very bright, pretty, pretty. So I think you're going to find them very summery and very useful. If you're watching colour trends at the moment, everything's going bright, so these are just spot on. And then these are our turquoise blues, so we've got Mermaid, Bora Bora, Beach Hut, and South Pacific. Very greeny turquoisey blues and they are also on trend and have been for the last two years and apparently they're here to stay for another couple of years, which is lucky because they happen to be my favourite blues. Right, so down the end here I've got my little weirdos. So we've got gold and silver and a metallic glaze and a pearl glaze. So let me just, it's a bit hard to sort of show them to you, but on the colour swatch here, the gold is a very antique gold, the silver we call pewter, and then on this third sample here, the scallop edge flower, we've got the metallic glaze, which is um, loaded with mica. And then one on the top is the pearl glaze, so that makes everything pearlescent. These are very useful. Joe uses the metallic glaze on top of slate, and it creates a fantastic looking silver. So that's those. And then next to those, we've got some blacks and whites. We've changed these a little bit. We've got snowflake, concrete. We've ditched elephant, and we've swap swapped it for slate. This is slate, which was in Joe's uh, limited edition set last time round. So that's become part of our basic 72. And then, of course, our black is little black dress. Okay, let's talk pink. So you can see the two pink families here. We've got a very vintage pink and then the brighter pinks. So if you want to work with the bright blues, the bright pinks are going to look great. But if you like your real rustic, vintage sort of um, tones, then these are going to be pretty. So here we've got um, the palest one is Sherbet, Candy Floss, Orchid, and Spanish Mulberry, which is that gorgeous plum colour. And then here we've sort of switched this family up a little bit as well. So the lightest colour is Vintage Lace, which is quite a pink toned off-white. The next shade is Blush, which is, um, you know, quite a useful colour. Nice pink tone to it. And then we've got Rose, and the darkest one is Claret. Purples. So we've now got two sets of purple. Previously we only had this set here. So we've also brought to you some very bright uh, bluey purples, which was a much needed colours in our range because we had nothing that was really bluey purple. So let's look at the old ones. Moonlight, Lilac, Pansy and Eggplant. And then in contrast you can see these are much bluer. So the newest one here is Wisteria. And then we've got Lavender. We've also got Purple Rain. And the deepest one, Blueberry. And that one's translucent, the other three are opaque. Okay, so how about some neutral tones? In the box here you can see I've got, these are kind of 
they're strange soft neutrals they're our, a bit weird accidental colors in a way um, and then we've got some more standard neutral browns both of these are very cool tones can't quite decide if this family here are purples or perhaps they're a bit pink but they are a little sort of weird thing all unto themselves but we couldn't get rid of them because everybody loves them so starting with the lightest we've got nougat the next one is mushroom and we've got um, this one here is a really weird color london night it's kind of gray it's kind of purple and then the darkest one is squid ink which again it's sort of like got that purpley aubergine -y tones to it really good undercoat i love that color so that's that family there and then to the beside that we've got our cool neutrals um, chalk yes we have brought chalk into the basic 72 everybody loves chalk so it's there and then we've got stone torp and french roast which is a really nice cool colored brown so warm browns is this next little family here and you can see how much warmer they are so the very first color of those is vanilla and then we've got caramel toffee and of course the darkest one at the end there is chocolate pudding and that leaves us to our very bright colors so we've sort of got oranges and there's you can see slightly muddy earthy version and a much poppier brighter version so let's start with the muddy version we've got haystack my favorite pumpkin soup autumn fire and then this one here brown shed it's quite a brown it is quite a orangey brown very good rust color and then in the bright tones and these are so useful for so many things and creating other colors we've got yellow submarine tango london bus and then blood orange which is a much more a much warmer color than claret claret's a much cooler red so that's all of our basic range the only thing I haven't mentioned are our glazes and so the glazes work this way we've got a matte a satin and a gloss the camera won't be able to pick it up but on this color here I've got matte satin and gloss uh, obviously gloss is much glossier than satin and matte has absolutely no shine to it whatsoever and then the other glaze of course is our very popular crackle glaze these glazes here are fantastic to mix into any of the other colors to make them more translucent or if you want to wash down a color to a thinner version of itself then you can use any of the glazes you can also use them as a sealant and they're fantastic on top of things like pan pastels so really handy thing to have so the only thing i have to show you now is our two new limited edition sets of paint so this is our first limited edition paint set from Lynn Brown for 2015. Um, so it's her third limited edition set, which is why it's got limited edition number three. You can only ever buy these in a box like this. And um, we've already shipped them out to retailers, so they're available in retailers stores now. And the colours are just gorgeous. Lynn went on holiday this year, last year it is, 2014 she went on holiday, and she was so inspired by these colours. So you've got a gorgeous banana, tangerine twist, bougainvillea and Caribbean sea. And here's a sample that Lynn's made using these colours. I know this is a class that she's teaching uh, coming up this year, and it just shows you how the colours really pop. Fantastic. And just perfect for summer and this four is Jo Firth Young's limited edition set number three um, she's got I like I sort of think of them as seaside colors I don't know why I just love these the blues with the buff to me always sort of seem a bit seasidey and she's got a prawn pink she kind of thinks he's a bit shrimpy pink <laughs> whatever but it's a really nice color and this is a great sample that Jo's made using that color palette so she's got the buff and the jade and of course they can wash out to different versions of themselves or even if you mix the buff into the blue you'll get a slightly more opaque blue and it's the same with the jade so you can see on this sample here she's managed to create different versions of the jade and the blue just by using these four paints on their own so fantastic colors so thanks a lot for joining us this is our fresco paints for 2015 and make sure you get yours from your local retailer as soon as you can